Hello again, everyone. This is the KMN 1971, back with another edition of my comic book collection spotlight series. Um, for those of you new to the channel, this is um, a little side series that I put out in between comic book hauls, uh, focusing in on comics from my PC, basically, <laughs> hence the name. And um, it could be whether um, focusing in on minor keys, major keys, um, medium-sized keys, small keys, um, character-driven spotlight videos, or um, classic storylines. So uh, this one will be focusing in on bargain basement first appearances and spec books. I figure it's the holidays, and like many of you, you're, you're trying to tighten your wallet so you can uh, spend some holiday cash on your loved ones, but you, yet you still have that itch to go out there and collect. So if you're a fan of first appearances and uh, spec books, then who isn't? Um, this could be the video for you because all of these books are either in long boxes or bargain bit basement bins across the nation. None of these books should be on anyone's wall. So without any further ado, here's Green Arrow number zero, which is the first appearance of um, Connor Hawk, who is um, the son of Ollie Queen. The first couple of these will be, uh, I guess, CW um, influenced. So, moving on, speaking of Green Arrow, here's Green Arrow number one, and this is the first time that Green Arrow ever had his own title. Birds of Prey number one, which features uh, the first appearance of the character White Canary, who differs greatly from the CW version, but um, still worth picking up. Also has a variant. That uh, goes for a bit more, obviously, but this is just a standard cover, which will be an ongoing theme throughout this uh, video, actually. But, um, yeah, cool. This is Wild Dog, number one. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't pay any more from $1 to $3 for this first appearance. The Ray, number one. This is the, the second version of the character of the Ray. I, I want to say he's the son of the original Ray. At least he was, and I'm not sure what they've done with the continuity since then. But um, I want to say that I read that he actually um, appeared lately on um, the CW-verse. I don't watch any of the CW shows, actually. I'm not really a fan, but I am grateful that they are out there just for the fact that they're introducing... DC characters to an entire new generation of fandom, which I think is very cool. It's what it's all about. All right. Thanos, number one. This is the first time that Thanos had his first ongoing title, and it is written and illustrated by the man himself, Jim Starlin. So, like many of you, I just saw that Infinity War trailer drop last week, and it looks incredible. So, um, can't hurt to get this one on the on the cheap. The Amazing Spider-Man Annual number twenty-five, and this contains the first uh, Venom solo story. But be warned, it is some horrendous '90s artwork throughout this comic. <laughs> so, enter at your own risk. Totally awesome Hulk, number 15. First appearance of the Protectors, the first all-Asian uh, Marvel team, which I think that's a very cool concept, but I do not think it's cool what they did to Shang-Chi over there. Also has a variant that goes for a bit more, as does this one. Star-Lord, number two, from his first volume, and um, according to CBSI, or is it Total Cop? Comics Mayhem, I'm not sure. Two sites that are worth checking out where I get a lot of information from. But this is the first appearance of the modern Yondu, uh, a.k.a. The, the film version, in uh, The Ravagers. Howard the Duck, number one, which we all know has the first uh, appearance of Gwenpool. And also, as we all know, has a variant that goes for quite a bit more.
power pack number one, which I would be shocked if Disney does not use that property after, um, well, maybe in phase four. Talk about a Marvel Disney ready-made <laughs> property. Another cheap spec book, the Omega Men number 37, and this features the first Lobo solo story. It's a backup story. And if you're going to pick that up, you might as well pick up Lobo number one, which is the um, first time Lobo had his own so solo title. Uh, love this cover, and uh, this is a comic that put Lobo and Simon Bisley on the map. Another cheap spec book, and one of my favorites, Deathstroke the Terminator, number seven. And... Um, Spoiler alerts for anyone that has not seen Justice League. Just fast forward until you don't see this comic on the screen any longer. But this is, um, as we all know, Deathstroke finally made his big screen debut in the the second um, scene after the credits after in Justice League. And um, how cool is that, right? So I think it would be criminal if they don't have Deathstroke and Batman throw down on the big screen. So... If many of you are speculating on that to happen, this is the first time that they actually meet and fight in the comics. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing, actually. Beautiful Mike Zek cover. And this came out at a time where Batman was in full Bat-God mode. <laughs> and um, it, it, he seemed unstoppable. And uh, Deathstroke beat the Bat-Guano <laughs> out, of, out of him in this issue. So, very cool. And... Um, like I said, very cheap. So even if it doesn't pan out, you have a pretty cool comic. Bat Guano. That's kind of repetitive now that I think about it. The Legion of Superheroes, number 294. Just features a fantastic um, Dark Side cover. One that's been homaged already. But um, this was another book that used to be Dollar Bin Fodder. And I think a lot of people just... Uh, gravitating towards this cover now. It doesn't go from really much. I think you can get it even on eBay for like 6 to $8, but that's more than a dollar now. And if Darkseid ever does make his um, big screen debut, which would also be crim criminal if he did not at some point, um, this book might see a spike. And even if it doesn't, if you can get it in a dollar bin, at least you have a part of what many consider to be the greatest Legion of Superhero story of all time, the Great Darkness Saga. Fury of Firestorm, the Nuclear Man, number 17. And this is the first appearance of Lorraine Riley as Firehawk. Favorite uh, superheroine from uh, my childhood. And I haven't seen her around in a while. I think the last time that I'd seen her in a comic was pff, all the way back in Identity Crisis. But you never know when these characters will come back in some shape or form. And if, like I said, if you just like first appearances, this one is a super cheap one. She actually made her first appearance in... Firestorm number one of this volume, but she did not become Firehawk until this issue. Another cheap, cheap spec book. Justice League number 31, which is the first Adam Hughes artwork at DC Comics. And uh, till this day, this whole run of, uh, which started off with Keith Giffen, J.M. DeMattis, and Kevin McGuire. And when McGuire left, um, Adam Hughes jumped on. That era right there was, um, is, till this day, probably one of my favorite eras on the Justice League franchise. Daredevil number 252, which is um, a cameo of the character that would become Typhoid Mary. I can never remember her name. <laughs> but, um... Typhoid Mary is allegedly going to be the antagonist on the upcoming season of Alias. So, there you go. Fantastic Four, number 50, or number 479. And this is the first appearance of Valeria Richards while she's still in the womb. It's very creepy. Creepy first appearance. Death's Head 2, number 1, which is the first appearance of uh, Death's Head 2, which was kind of Marvel's lame answer to Lobo back in the 1990s. 
But you never know. He might appear in one of those Guardians of the Galaxy movies at one point in the future. Action Comics number 598. The first appearance of the Checkmate organization, which was DC's kind of lame answer to S.H.I.E.L.D. back in the 1980s. Action Comics number 645, which is the first appearance of Maxima, who um, I still think would be a great antagonist for Supergirl, both in her uh, comic books and on her TV show. The Adventures of Superman, number 465. And uh, this is the first appearance of Hank Henshaw, who would eventually go on to become Cyborg Superman, who is who happens to be one of my top ten favorite Superman villains. Speaking of which, <laughs> The Adventures of Superman, number 500. And this contains uh, the first appearance of Hank Henshaw as the Cyborg Superman, as well as the first appearance of Steel and Karna Kent the second Superboy. So, a lot of cool things happening in this comic book. A lot of uh, long-lasting characters that made their debut in this comic, but it was just so overprinted. I, I own a copy, which is this, the, the standard copy, as well as the, the white-bagged copy. Hey, it was the 90s, don't... It <laughs> uh, was just expected of me back then. And there's also, it turns out, a, a platinum edition of this, which is the one to look out for if you're looking for something that will ever be worth anything. But you never know. I mean, New Mutants number 98 was a book with a with a very high um, count, a, 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 a very high print run, rather. So, and look at that. So I'm not trying to draw a parallel between this and that, and not saying that it ever will, but just for the first appearances, definitely worth a dollar. Let's get that on up there. An old school favorite. DC Comics presents number 52, which is the first appearance of Ambush Bug. And uh, Ambush Bug is a, a, another one of those wall breaking characters in the tradition of, like, say, Howard the Duck and Deadpool. Actually, you could actually say right in the middle of Howard the Duck and Deadpool, there's Ambush Bug. More old school favorites. A lot of these books. Uh, you, that I've shown off in this uh, video, I've, I've shown off uh, like in multiple videos throughout the year, and uh, some of these I've just dug out of my PC just to you know make a a, a pretty good video of it hopefully. So here's X Men number four, which is the first appearance, as most of us know, of Omega Red, who is a, a classic X Men and Wolverine villain, and with my own bias uh, on uh, on record, any any time you can. Um, get Jim Lee on an X-Men title. That's a great thing, especially if you can get it on the cheap. And there were plenty of these printed back in the day. X-Men number eight, which is the first appearance of Gambit's quote-unquote wife, Belladonna. And with the Gambit movie allegedly back on track, I guess this book has seen a, a small, 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 small tick in interest again. But with the Gambit movie back on track, I would take that with a gigantic grain of salt. Being a big Wolverine fan, I think anyone should own a copy of this. Wolverine Origins number 10, which is the first appearance of Dakin, or Dokken, uh, Wolverine's son, who is kind of like the, as far as collectors go, um, kind of like the unwanted stepchild when well, at least in comparison to Laura X23 and um, Jimmy Hudson from the Ultimate Universe but then again I guess there is a like with most of these a variant that does go for a premium but for the standard cover you can probably find this still out there very cheap and we'll end it off <clears throat> with my favorite franchise the Batman franchise so, Batman and Robin Eternal, first appearance of, um, oh my god, I'm having a blank. Well, first appearance of Orphan. <laughs> I, I forget, the old Batgirl that used to be Batgirl, but now she goes by Orphan. I cannot remember, remember her name. It is bothering me. Oh, 
All right, moving on. Catwoman number 23, which was the first appearance of uh, the Joker's daughter, or at least the second version of the Joker's daughter. As we all know, the, the first Joker's daughter appeared in Batman Family in the 1970s and um, under the, the name of um, Harla Quinn, and who was obviously an inspiration to Paul Dini when he uh, went on to co-create Harley Quinn. But this is a completely different character that debuted during the New 52, obviously. And I don't think they've done anything with her since. But you never know. And it's a, a Batman character first appearance. So had to have it. 52, week 7. And this is the first appearance of Kate Kane. And this was also, like, I would recommend picking up this entire series. It was just a sweet read. And um, can be found on Dirt, dirt Cheap. Just about every cover is fantastic from um, J.G. Jones, so I would highly recommend it. So, first appearance of Kate Kane, who would eventually go on to become the second Batwoman. Once again, spotting a, another great J.G. Jones cover. And a, a lot of copies are out there. I want to say 52 was selling either in the like 90,000 to the low 100,000s at this time. So, once again, a lot of copies, but... As I said before, New Mutants 98. <laughs> so, you never know. And, um, yeah, very cool appearance under, for the Batman family. The Huntress, number one. And this is the first appearance of the second version of the Huntress. First version was um, Helena Wayne, who was obviously the daughter of Bruce Wayne, the Batman. This one has um, Mafia family origins, and I believe this is the version, or rather, iteration of the Huntress that is being used currently now in the DC Universe. And lastly, my favorite first appearance on the cheap, Batman number 436, the first appearance of Tim Drake, who I, well, to be honest, I consider this more of a Definitely more of a cameo appearance, but I guess the market has decided that this is his first appearance. So I'll just roll with it. But when did this book come out? 1989, 1990? Obviously, Tim Drake is sticking around. <laughs> it's 2017 now. And um, for you that, for the few of you that don't know, Tim Drake was uh, the third Robin and now currently goes as uh, under the moniker of Red, Rob Red Robin. And um, is a major major character under the Batman family umbrella. So definitely uh, just finished enjoying the uh, Lonely Place of Living, which was a very Tim-centric storyline that ran through uh, Detective Comics recently. And uh, yeah, very cool comic to uh, pick up, especially on the cheap. And uh, I just remembered, excuse me, but it was bothering me. Her name was Cassandra Kane. My brain's working again. Cassandra Kane. Uh that was bothering me. <laughs> so, yeah, just ending it off with the first appearance of Tim Drake. So that's all I have. So hopefully this can help uh, scratch that itch, that collecting itch during the holiday season when you're uh, spending some holiday cash on your, your family and your loved ones out there. So um, I just want to say thank you for everyone for watching, liking, subscribing as usual. And um, thanks, thanks to everyone that reached out and um, gave me some well wishes, whether it be for my... Uh, smashing into a, a buck at a pretty high speed or especially you know my well wishes towards my mom i'm not exactly a young guy but as as most of us feel i, I would say unless you're like lizzie borden or the <laughs> the menendez brothers we tend to cherish our parents and want to keep them around as long as possible so thank you all for the well wishes uh, i will be back next week with a very story driven comic book collection spotlight uh featuring my top 10 justice league stories so uh, i don't think there'll be any keys in there per se but some great reading that uh goes through various eras of the the justice league and especially with all the negative press <laughs> uh, obviously circulating around the justice league right now i figured who knows my, why, why not try something revolutionary and throw something positive about the justice league on the internet so i hope you all will enjoy it take care have a great weekend. See you later.